Monthly subscription boxes for the Atari 2600? Is it worth it? Stick around and find out. It seems monthly subscription boxes exist for just about anything these days. Perhaps you bought a subscription for a friend that really likes to listen to random artists of a particular genre, or you have an interest in Japanese culture and want to sample their sweet candy for yourself. If you've got an interest in something, then there's probably a company betting that you'll pay for a random box of it. So how good are these? But most importantly, do they have one for over 40 year old Atari 2600 games? Today, we're gonna to try out the Retro Game Treasures subscription box see how easy it is to order, the quality of the box, and if I think it's worth it. Let's start with their website. I'll provide a link in the video description. The website doesn't give much information on the history of the company, but I found the domain name was registered in February of 2014 with its first hit on the Wayback Machine in 2015, which lists their business name as Dr. Light Labs LLC out of Orlando, Florida. Dr. Light most likely being a reference to Mega Man, one of the greatest series of the NES. So two points for them for choosing their name. They offer four subscriptions, each consisting of a single box with three to five random games based on your preferences. You can choose to pay $36.99 each month, $107.97 every three months, $203.94 every six months, or an entire year of boxes for $383.88. If you just want to try them out, then the month-to-month -month subscription would be best. However, if you're likely to stay with them for an entire year, then I'd suggest the 12-month prepay and save $60. After purchasing your subscription, you'll be taken to the Game Preferences page. This is where you can tell them what you like so they can better customize your box. You can select what kind of collector you are just from starting out to a retro game connoisseur. Next, you can select which types of genres you prefer, like action adventure to survival horror, and then the general theme you enjoy, such as fantasy, skateboarding, wrestling. The next section is where I ran into a problem. This is where you select which consoles you want them to select games for. I'm really only interested in the Atari 2600 at the moment, and unfortunately the page does require you to select a minimum of two. At this point I figured my little adventure was over, so I decided to cancel the subscription. Again, unfortunately it was a little difficult to figure out how to do that, but eventually I found my way out of the tab and back to the account page where you can click on the edit button in your subscription box. There you can find a link with an email address where you can cancel your subscription. Not exactly ideal, I would prefer a button. However, it did give me the chance to explain why I wanted to cancel. So I very briefly mentioned that I'm really only interested in games for the Atari 2600. After an hour or two, I received a response saying that I could select another console and they would add a note to the account saying that I only wanted 2600 games. So with this good news, I went back to the preference pages and added the NES to my list of consoles. Next, we add our current games to the inventory to make sure that we don't get any duplicates in our subscription box. This part is a little tedious, but the interface is pretty okay and it didn't take very long. Now we wait, or waited, as you can see, I have the box right here and it only took a couple of weeks for delivery. Let's open it up and see what's in there. Let's see what we have. Adventure. So Adventure is a game that I have never had and I've never played. I've read so much about it. I know everyone uh, really uh, loves this game. I look forward to playing this one and trying it out for myself. Hubert. Hubert is a classic. I may have played this on the Atari 2600. I certainly have played it in the arcade and uh, on a few other machines. 
So again, looking forward to playing this on the 2600. Star Raiders. Also a game that uh, I have, I don't think I've ever played. So this one is from the Sears Telegames branding. So I don't know too much about the game, but look forward to playing that maybe in a, in a live episode coming up, which I'm, uh, I'm planning for some time, sometime this year. And last, Raiders of the Lost Ark. So some people say it's a horrible game. I had this when I was little and I absolutely loved it. I do not have the manual with it. Nothing, no manuals came with this. I believe that this is a game that requires you to have the manual to know what you're doing. So I will have to go online and download a manual for this, I believe. Again, look for this in a later episode um, where we'll do some live game testing. And that's it for the box. So four games, quality looks pretty good. Cubert, there's some distress on the labeling, but it is, it's, it's in fine condition. I'm not too worried about the, uh, the labels or anything like that. I'm not a, a big time collector in all of these. So there we go. Retro game treasures. So let's have a look at what the market value for these games are. So the first one that we pulled out was Adventure. So it looks like the loose price for Adventure is $15.67. Next, let's look at Qbert. And Qbert comes into a loose price of $9.82. Up next is Star Raiders. So for Star Raiders, we have the Sears Telegames version, and that loose price is $3.90. And lastly, we have Raiders of the Lost Ark, which comes in at a loose price of $5.69. For the four games, the total value comes out to $25.49. Now the monthly subscription box is $36.99, plus $15 for shipping for me which comes out to $54.99. Do I think that it's worth it? For me, I'd say no. This was an interesting experiment. It was fun to do it for one month. Uh, maybe in the future, I'll, I'll try it again and see what sort of randomness that I can get out there. But if you don't want to go scrambling for games or if you're open for having uh, a little bit of variety, a, a little bit of surprise coming to your door, then certainly um, this might be worth it for you. And I, I suggest give it a try, see what you get. You might like it for yourself. If you found the video interesting, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button and share this episode. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell to make sure you're notified when a new video comes out. If you'd like to help support the development of the channel, please consider becoming a patron. I'll link to that in the description. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.